Hey guys, it's Milan from Quick Reference, and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple TCP echo server in Go. So we're going to make a server and a little client to demonstrate the server. So once you have everything set up, you're going to need to import net, FMT, and log. Net there is the most important one. Um, so let's get right into it. First, you want to establish a listener. Actually, first, I'm going to print a little statement uh, saying that the server is listening. Server listening on port 3000, and then you're going to set up a listener. And error are equal to net.listen TCP. The address will be localhost at port 3000. Check the error. I'm going to copy this error checking statement here so we don't have to mess around with that later. Once you have your listener set up, uh, you want to defer or close the listener. Like that. Then you're going to start an endless for loop here, uh, or a while loop, or whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> and inside here, you want to accept connections. So the way you do that is you say con and error are equal to listener dot accept. So basically this for loop is just going to keep running and accepting new connections as they come in. It's going to stall at this point until a connection can come in. I'm going to check the error and we're going to print a little statement. I'm going to say new new connection like that. Um, now we're going to need something to listen to the connection and, and receive incoming bytes. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to create another function. Uh, call a listen connection. I'm going to pass it a net.con as a parameter. And uh, you're going to start an endless for loop here as well. And the first, the first, so we want to basically listen for messages coming in from the connection. The first thing we need to do is create a buffer. And all that is is a slice of bytes. Uh, that is the size of 1,400. Now this size, it's variable, but uh, I read somewhere that 1,400 is a good size for TCP messages because they're not going to be greater than that. Because if they are, we have a we have a problem. Next, you want to actually read the data into that buffer. So data size and error are equal to con dot read, and you pass in the buffer. So what that does is it reads a message and it passes it into the buffer. The message is data size. So the problem with this is, first, actually, let's error check. The problem with this is um, basically buffer is our data, but only the first data size bytes of buffer are the actual message. So we can put that in another variable. The data equals buffer begins at 0 and ends at data size. So we're basically taking a slice out of buffer. So that's our data. We're going to print out saying received message, and then we're going to stringify the message. Uh, you're probably not going to be doing, we're only doing the stringifying for data purposes, for demonstration purposes, my bad. You're probably not going to be doing that if you're playing around with raw TCP. Um, and then to actually echo it back, all you do is con write. Actually, this takes a size, which we don't need, and an error. And here we're going to pass back the data. So we're echoing it back. Just like that. Error check. One thing I forgot to mention is over here. Um, if you get an error here, that generally means that the connection was uh, closed. So what we're going to do is print out a statement and say uh, connection closed. Okay, and then we're going to return like that. Uh, yes, here, because we already declared error. Now, here in our endless for loop, we want to call listen connection in another Go routine. Because if we don't, wow. Because we, if we don't call in another Go routine, it's going to get here and then go into this endless for loop and it won't be able to accept more messages. So um, that's why we call it in another go routine. 
and the go routine is going to uh, terminate itself when the client disconnects. Okay, so that's our server. Now let's uh, actually what I want to do is over here. We're going to say message sent and then again stringify the data just so we can see it in the terminal for demonstration purposes. Okay, so that's that. Now as for the client, uh, we just want to connect. Oh, what the hell am I doing? We're going to connect to localhost 3000, check the error. Let me just copy that over really quick. And then what we're going to do is con dot write. Uh, and we're going to make a byte slice out of a string. So this is the message we're going to write to the server. We're going to say, hello, server. This actually takes a data size and an error. An error check, and we're going to print out that we sent the message. Um, message sent. We're going to take this. Okay, and then we're actually going to do that one more time. We're going to send two consecutive messages. Okay. You'll see why I'm doing this in a second once we get the demonstration running. Okay. Now, actually, one more thing I almost forgot. We want to actually listen for messages in the client. We already have that message listening code written. It's right here. Uh, it's basically all of this without the writing it back because we don't want to echo that message back to the server again. Because if we do that, they'll get stuck in an endless for loop, endless loop of just messaging each other. So you just set up another for loop in the client to listen for messages. And connection closed, received message. There we go. Okay. Let's demonstrate this. I have two terminals open here. We can demonstrate it really quickly with. The top one is a server. As you can see, server listening on 3000. And here's the client. Okay. We go. Oh, sorry. That's not in. There we go. Uh, go run main.go. Okay. I don't know why that's at the bottom there, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so here we see. So it's connected to the server, and it sends the message, hello server, and then it sends the message, how are you? Message received, hello server. Message sent, hello server. Message received, how are you? Message sent, how are you? So it echoes it back. So it sends two messages, and then it receives the same two messages. Now, this didn't work as I was hoping. Let me try and do that again. I wanted to point something out to you guys about TCP. Um, I hope it works. Yes, there we go. That's what I wanted to prove. See, see the way we send hello server and how are you consecutively. The server receives that as one message because that's the thing about TCP. You, you can never, TCP isn't a message based protocol like WebSockets is. TCP is a connection based protocol. So just because you send one big long message doesn't mean it's going to be received on the other side as one big long message. It could be received as two or three or even one message. So uh, you're going to need to write buffering mechanisms to counter that. And if you guys are interested in that, go check out my GitHub. I have some cool stuff there. Um, Okay, um, all the code is going to be in a pastebin in the description. Thank you guys very much for watching.